Hey everyone, just want to talk about a few things related to the channel. Some stuff has come up, some updates on other things, yada yada yada, bing bong boom, let's, get, let's just get right to it. Okay, so the last time I had a big channel update like this was back in... Oh, <laughs> April of 2020 when I had, uh, I had that uh, video where I talk about like work, stress, and recovery and ended up crying on recording. That was embarrassing. Fuck. Sorry about that. Uh, really sorry about that. Uh... God. I try not to let shit like that happen if I can help it. Uh, outside of live streams, the, well, the authentic me is very rarely seen. Uh, you might see it on my Tumblr blog for the most part, but uh, for the most part, I try to present a very particular kind of person in my videos, or at least I, I try to be collected. I try to be passionate at the very least. I don't really let myself be angry or upset or sad in my videos if I can help it because they're scripted so it's it's easier to do that um, a lot of people think I'm very angry in my videos uh, I'm not I'm just speaking with passion and passion is cringe to a lot of people but yeah that was my last update video so yeah we're coming up on two years oh, fucking god two years okay so anyway I want to talk about a few things uh, streams in a minute and content I hate that word content uh, because, uh, a little while back, I was experiencing sub drop, like, just, I was, I was kind of slowly bleeding subscribers, and I was trying to figure out how to fix that, and I took a, and I basically went and took up a poll. I had a, I had a community post up asking people about it, and then a day later, I announced several changes as to what I was about to start doing. Uh, namely, chief among them, people were asking for In A Minute to come back, and they were asking for glass of water videos on different topics. At the time, there had been a period where I was making a lot of World of Warcraft and Owl House videos, and McKay had actually just come to the channel and had, uh, and we were re-uploading most of our content, which was always going to be a temporary thing. We were always going to run out of uh, things to re-upload eventually. So people asked for like, newer, more interesting video, you know, videos on more interesting on newer topics that weren't just talking about Sylvanas again, which I'll admit I got into a rut regarding and I, I apologize for that. But people also asked for In A Minute to come back. Now, In A Minute was a bread and butter series for my channel for quite some time. It was, for the most part, a riff series. Uh, people often compare it to Cinema Sins. I don't much care for that comparison. I think Mystery Science Theater 3000 is a better uh, approach. Basically, is that what In a Minute was, is that I would watch something through, I would crack jokes about it, sometimes I would make a, a, a serious attempt at critique, but for the most part those those instances were rare. Uh, we would mo I would mostly just crack jokes about it. Uh, during the Star Wars videos, uh, I, was, I was going to do In a Minute's on Star Wars. I did The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, and they did terribly. They did horribly. Previously, I had been doing videos on My Little Pony and moved into Steven Universe, Star Versus, and then Little Witch Academia. And then I moved on to the Disney project where I mostly did Disney films, and those did pretty well. And then when I was done with the Disney films, I moved on to Star Wars. That's like, okay, let's do another film marathon because that one went well. This one did not do well. It did not do well at all, despite the fact that the videos were longer. Uh, I think The Phantom Menace has more jokes in it than any other video I've ever made. Uh, it's not the longest one. I think the MLP movie is the longest one, but the Phantom Menace one came out at a time when I started limiting clips to like 10 seconds. But the Star Wars ones did not do very well, and so I gave up on it because they were doing actually so poorly that it was a loss to make them. At the end of the day, this is my job, and so I need to actually do things that make money. Uh, so when I brought it back, I decided to go with Hilda and Craig of the Creek, uh, and that eventually turned down to just Craig of the Creek. Um, and... Those did not do well either. In fact, those performed even worse. The last Craig of the Creek video I did was Bring Out Your Beast, and it only just recently hit uh, 10,000 views. Uh, and most of the Craig of the Creek videos languished around three to 4,000 for quite some time. They've been slowly climbing up, but like some of them, I mean, like some of the really early ones are actually approaching six months now and they still haven't broken 10K. So that's not good. Uh, so we stopped doing that. Uh, at fir first, we stopped doing uh, Hilda uh, and then we just sort of dropped off Craig of the Creek. I finished the first season of the Old Republic series. Again, that did not perform very well. Uh, but the difference there is that the actual effort to make it is very small. So I don't know. I might continue that. 
uh, and then I move, but, uh, and like at that point we were in a point of low viewership and the sub loss wasn't being fixed. And then the sub loss was fixed when I did two small things. I changed my channel branding from the icon to a subscribe button. And then I started organizing my videos into playlists and uh, it, it, I, I organized a lot of my videos into more collected playlists. Like we've got like, instead of glass of water, it's Lily's video essays. Instead of the thing about her Michaela's corner, it's Michaela's video essays. And I changed how I do end cards very slightly. And that caused uh, my subscribers to shoot up. A few small changes to the infrastructure of my channel and subscribers shot right back up regardless of the content I was making. I'll be honest, I felt a, I, I, I felt uh, I felt a little patronized by that. It's like, I, I felt really patronized by that. It's like, all right, fine. We'll just change the uh, thing on the corner to a subscribe. But are you fucking kidding me? I've been working my ass off to fix subscriber bleed. And this small change makes it shoot up. What the fuck? I'm mad about that. Like, I am actually mad about that. I am so angry that I worked my fucking ass off trying to fix subscriber bleed. And then I just made one small change at the behest of some article I was reading, not thinking it would work. And it fucking worked. You know, I like to think that the algorithm is not something you actually have to chase. That if you just make uh, passionate content, then people will come because people are, there are gonna be people who want it. Boy, does YouTube really love proving me wrong sometimes. I don't resent any, I need to make this clear. I don't resent any of you for that. Um, I just, I'm mad at myself for sticking to that principle of not gaming the algorithm for so fucking long to the point that, you know, I, I was doing fine without it, but now it's starting to actively hurt my channel, which makes sense. YouTube has been changing uh, things around to actively hurt channels who don't do that. My viewership has not improved to what it used to be. Previously, typical viewership was around 35 to 40K views on a new video. Uh, now it's around, uh, 10 to 20k. Uh, still better than what it was when I when I brought In A Minute back, because like, th that's the thing. In A Minute wasn't just unprofitable, it buried my channel for a while. The viewership on everything plummeted. Uh, so for those of you waiting for Craig of the Creek, for more Craig of the Creek, uh, it's not coming back, I'm sorry. I might consider doing the season roundup. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna think about that. Not every episode of Craig of the Creek is worth talking about, because again, Craig of the Creek is a really low-key show. So, I might do a full season one roundup at some point, with the caveat that some episodes might be omitted or not have much talked about them at all, but I mean, it would still be a pretty long video going through every single episode of the first season, because it's like 40 episodes. I, I might consider that. I will I will definitely, I will consider it, uh, but again, that is like another big project that I'm adding to my plate. And I've already got a couple that I've added to my plate so far. Uh, so we're back to basics with Michaela's Owl House videos, Michaela's Corner, Glass of Water, and whatever big projects I'm currently working on. I'm working on two, Pokemon Replay and the Owl House is lovely and here's why. Not gonna talk, please don't ask me about them, I'm not gonna talk about them. And if you bother me about them, I'm gonna just lose interest in doing them. I was planning a full multi-part retrospective of the Pokemon series, but after doing the first one, I got stuck on the second one. Like, I, I hit a creative block and I was struggling to find things to say about Generation 2 enough that would fill that would warrant uh, its own video uh, and the p and just people kept bugging me about it and bugging me and bugging me and bugging me and pestering and pestering and pestering when is it coming out when is the video coming out when is the video coming out and no matter how many times i say it's coming out when it's done people just keep bugging me anyway they just keep poking and poking and poking and at that point it's like i was already experiencing massive creative block and i just i just threw it aside i just, I just threw it the fuck away and i i just said that's it it's canceled i don't want to do it anymore i don't see that happening with these uh projects but that also comes with the caveat again don't bother me about them i don't have any info for for you on them there is no info they're still being scripted and of course, the Owl House isn't even finished yet, so I can't even get most of my work done on it. It only just came back from a hiatus that was way too fucking long. If so, yeah, if you're inclined to ask for details on those videos, don't. Shut up. Now, as for streams, uh, streams have been largely fine, okay? I mean, streaming is largely fine. I get about, depending on what kind of stream I'm doing, I usually just do hangout streams and editing streams. And the viewership can be anywhere from 30 to... 
two hundred. It's usually for editing streams. You, uh, like most of my streams are hangout streams, and most people don't show up for those. Uh, but one problem that has somewhat plagued my streams for a while is basically people begging and begging and begging me to continue to say it to like save my streams. I don't do that for one reason, and one very good reason, uh, and that is. If I did my video pan my video page on my channel, it would be flooded with streams. There would be like multiple streams in between each video. Uh, and I don't like that. I don't like that. It's messy, it's cluttered, it's not a good look for any creator for most of their videos to just be stream archives. And I don't want it. Uh, but people keep saying, well, I always miss your streams and I never get to catch them. I always miss your streams and oh, I, I wish I still had the VOD so I could catch them. The thing is, though, is that I do have a few streams that are available for people to watch. Ch case in point being the Transmog competition. Uh, that has been up for almost two years. Uh, it was published on May 30th, 2020. Oh, fuck. I did that on my birthday. Shit. <laughs> uh, so it has been up for almost two years and it has had eight... 8.4k views. It does not get a lot of viewership. It gets very little. In fact, it gets about maybe 100 views a month these days. It gets 100 views a month. And that was a stream that was pre-planned and advertised uh, that people had to participate in in order for it to even happen. And very few people watched it. So my question has always been, if I did that, if I, you know, if I saved stream archives, would anyone actually bother to watch them? I don't think you would, I'll be honest. Like, I'll, I'll be completely honest. Like, you, the hypothetical person watching this, who really wishes that I would say I would keep my stream archives up, I don't think you would actually watch them. I think you want the stream archives because you feel like you're missing out on something, but if you had them, you're no longer missing out, and it's completely up to you to decide whether or not you want to watch them, and you probably wouldn't. You might watch them for like five minutes and then... and then click away. That's... that's what I honestly think you would do. I think you just want them because of FOMO. You, you're afraid... you're just afraid that you're missing out on something. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not. Uh, if you're somebody who does not like, like, l l let's be honest here. If you don't like to interact in a stream, if you don't like to be, uh, interact in the chat and, you know, keep the stream chat on topic, interacting with the person who is streaming, you aren't missing out on any anything because that's why I stream. I stream to get interaction with viewers. Interaction is the thing I crave. I mean, look, I'm an extrovert, okay? I like to interact with people. I like to be around people. I like to talk to people. And one thing about my audience that often frustrates me is that they are often very averse to inter to interaction. Uh, like, the thing I care about with new videos is the comments. I get long, detailed comments. I am the happiest fucking, uh, la I am the happiest girl in the world. I like inter- I, I like interaction with the viewers and viewers who don't like, like, viewers who are passive, who don't interact, who don't engage in stream chat, I actually don't like them being around. Uh, we recently had this with our patron calls, because I hold monthly, I hold monthly, I hold bi-weekly patron calls for people who pledge $15 or more. Uh, and recently, uh, participation in the patron calls dropped to maybe four or five people, because I specifically said, if you are going to come into the patron calls and never speak and just lurk, do not come into the patron calls because you creep me out. <laughs> and knowing that there are people in there, like, like g given the number of names I see in the stream chat compared to viewers, there are a lot of people who watch streams and they don't interact at all. And I'll be honest, I'm a little creeped out by that. Like, I'm very uncomfortable with people just lurking and not saying anything. If I could, I would, I would make it so that you can't be invisible on my Discord server. Because again, people who do that make me very uncomfortable. I, I decided to throw a bone. I moved to Twitch for streaming. And I did several streams there, and viewership was considerably lower. The clip feature, which is about the only benefit to me, was never used. Nobody uh, watched the stream VODs, v like nobody. They got maybe one or two views after being posted. Only one stream had any real interaction at all. And all the benefits I gained from streaming dried up like that. They just completely dried up because my audience is here on YouTube and most of them don't care. So I'll be honest, I don't really believe anyone when they say, I wish I could watch your uh, stream bots because I don't think you actually will. Uh, and so I made the decision I'm moving my streaming back here and going back to business as usual. And the answer, and like people try, and I, I had a post up about this and people tried to suggest alternatives like, well, what if you just upload, what if you just make a second channel for your stream bots? You're not going to watch it. And that's a lot of effort and bandwidth for something nobody's going to use. You're not, like, that's the thing. You're not going to do it. 
you might watch stream highlights. I know a lot of people would probably really like it if I made stream highlights. Again, that's a lot of effort for something that I can't be certain is actually going to pay off. Because again, this is my job. I have bills to pay. But the, the problem, of course, is that nobody wants the stream VODs. People say they do, but I have no reason to believe that anybody does. People told me that they wanted In A Minute Back. I brought In A Minute Back. Very few people were watching it. They're like, what do you expect me to, at that point, what do you expect me to do? Like, you want me to go, like, people want me to go, there are some people who want me to go through the effort to make a second channel, spend hours of my day painstakingly re-uploading every single, mo sometimes multiple hours long stream VOD I have, downloading them from my channel, re-uploading them to another channel, and what do I get out of it? Like, what's the benefit to it? There really is, there, there isn't any. I mean, most, I mean, I stream at all hours of the day. Sometimes I stream early in the morning. Sometimes I stream in the afternoon. Sometimes I stream uh, in the evening. Sometimes I stream in the dead of night. So no matter what your schedule is, there is probably going to be a stream at some point specifically for you. And a lot of people just aren't, just don't show up. They're not interested at all, which is fine. Like I'm fine with people not being interested in my streams by and large. I get like 20 people who are actually engaged with the chat and I'm fine. That's all I'm there. That's all I'm there for. Cause like, again, I'm here for interaction. So if I just got like 15 regulars who are in the, who are, who are in the streams frequently interacting with the chat and talking to me, I consider that a success but I have no reason to re-upload the, to keep the VODs up. Like, re remember guys, like, here's the thing. If you upload things to a YouTube channel that don't get, uh, that get comparatively lower views than you normally get, it buries your channel. And uploading it to a second channel, it's, that's, I don't, I feel like you don't appreciate just how much work that is. That is a lot of fucking work. That is a lot of work, bandwidth, time. I've got to basically, I've got to, I've got to spend time uploading every single stream, tagging them, putting them in different playlists for organization. You know, here are my WoW streams, here are my uh, other streams, and figuring out which stream is which because most of them have the same title and thumbnail because they were never meant to be kept, probably dating them. And so there's this whole process to go through for every single stream. And I have 82 stream VODs since I started making them private rather than just flat out deleting them. And I only, I only started doing that because other people were making archive channels to upload them, mostly to have harassment material. And I made them pro and I made my streams private so that I could fucking tell it so I, I could have them taken down. So that's a lot. Like that's 82 stream VODs that would all have to be tagged, playlisted, and put up there. And I, I know the immediate response is, oh, well, you don't have to tag them and put them up there. You could just upload them and leave them there. Again, that's still a lot to go through for something you aren't going to watch. Because th th there's where it starts. There's, there's where it ends right there. Will you watch it? I know the immediate response from people who want stream VODs is to say yes. But historically, based on viewer behavior, the answer is actually no. You say yes because it'll get you what you want, but you won't actually use it. Because again, people want stream VODs because they feel like they're missing out. But once they have the stream VODs, they no longer feel like they're missing out because it's always there. They can do it at any time. And then they won't. And, and the end result is that they won't. How many, how, how, many of you got, how many of you guys have a backlog of shows to watch or a backlog of films to watch or a backlog of games to play? You're never, historically, you're never getting around to that. The more you say, I need to get around to watching or playing or seeing X, the less likely you are to do it. I like... That's why I don't have a backlog. I don't have a backlog of shit to play. It's like if I want to play, if I want to play something, or if I want to watch something, I'm gonna do it. And I often don't engage with most things immediately at release. Kingdom Hearts is about the only one. It's like, oh hey, a new Pixar movie came out. Great, I'll watch that when I get around to it. Maybe if I if I if I feel like it. Because that's always my response. Is like maybe if I feel like it and if I get around to it. It's like, have I seen Turning Red? Not yet. Why? Don't feel like it. It's like, oh, but it's a really good movie. I never said it wasn't. There is the trap that I'm ultimately in because it's like I'm being asked to go through to go put in a lot of time and effort into something that I don't think will pay off and that time could better be spent on something else which brings me to the other thing I want to talk about is that and, and and it's a little less luxury but it's more of like an alert just just letting I feel like I like I I, I I feel like I need to let the viewers know about this is that lately I've been feeling very tapped out like creatively I have several scripts for new videos in the works, but they're all hit, but they've all hit dead ends. I've got a script on main characters. I've got a script on Lindsay Ellis, which I'm not actually going to make into a video. I just wrote that because I had feeling, I had thoughts and opinions I needed to just get out of my system. 
I've got a script about Garrosh. I've got a script on Avatar. I've got a script on my favorite villains. Uh, and I've got a script on The Last Jedi, which is... I, I, I know it's like Last Jedi discourse that's like five years old. It's mostly just stuff I don't see anyone else talking about. And so I needed to get I need to get it off my chest. I need to get that video done and just that's for that that's for me. That's I, I need to I need to just like get that out and so I can stop thinking about it. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, and they've all hit dead ends. I'll open them, I'll stare at them, and it's just I don't know what to put in here. If I have a new idea, that usually goes the same way. It's why I have all these scripts backed up. I I'm just I'm stuck and I'm stuck and I don't really have any strong feelings on most of these topics. And the topics I do have strong feelings on, I just hit this wall of unable to get anything out. Probably not help that I've been suffering from chronic back pain for quite some time. Uh, my back, like people on streams have probably noticed is that sometimes I'll just get caught in this gasp or I'll, I'll even scream because like my upper back, it seizes up and it stings and it just, it hurts a lot. <laughs> And I've been having to deal with that for a couple of years now. It's really hard to work with chronic pain. But even just beyond, but even beyond that, I just even when I'm not in the midst of a, of a surge of back pain, I can't get anything off, like out of my head and onto the page. And so it's like for the first, like for the first time in my life, I really am experiencing creative block. Uh, even like writing stuff with my wife is just becoming a lot less easy to do it's it words used to just flow out of me with uh, when i'm writing with my wife and nowadays when i write with my wife uh when it's my turn to actually write something my narration is stilted my dialogue is awkward i'm not pacing things properly it's just, i don't know what to do uh so that is th th this is me warning you that there might be a content drought i'm not sure if there will be but it's taking me a lot longer to get even a simple video out and even just trying to decide which one to focus on because again i'll try to focus on one i'll get stuck and then i have nowhere else to go uh and then i just end up in this vicious circle about the only video i'm making any actual progress on is eternity's ended in a, in a nutshell because I, I do those text-to-speech Warcraft videos where uh, it's it's a big parody. Uh, it's a just a pancake-style parody of the war of Shadowlands lately. That's what I've been doing. I, I did one for Battle for Azeroth, and then Shadowlands, and then Chains of Domination, and now I'm doing one for Eternity's End. And that one is really easy to do, and I love making it. It is so much fun to make because I'm getting back to kind of like what I what I really like doing is I like doing comedy. I'm not really much of a critic. I, I'm, I'm an okay critic. Uh, I would say. I'm not as good as Movie Bob, but I'm better than most of the X Channel Awesome creators, which is is not a great, it's not a very high rung to be on. But I, I accept, you know, I, I accept where I am in the pecking order. Uh, but what I'm really big on more than anything else is comedy. I'm a comedian at the end of the day, and comedy is what I've wanted to do since I was a small child. And comedy was how I st was how my channel really took off the ground. It was how I gained most of my audience was just being funny. Once we go through, um, no and getting back to that, and so get, doing any comedic material has always been very easy for me. But doing critical and critical material, critical analysis of anything, is increasingly difficult. I don't really know what to expect from that. Uh, whether or not content is going to slow down. I mean, it's already slowed down. It's been how long since my last? Glass of water video. February 23rd. Yeah, so it's been almost a month. Um, and we've only had the Eat Bang Kill Tour video. Um, and, you know, Michaela's been slowing down too because she has a day job. We are thinking of ready, putting more serious. comedy in. Uh, like, it, we're, we're not going to go the route of production bloat, but more of just like, maybe instead of the usual opener I have for Glass of Water, doing stuff with like a little a little animatic with me, McKay, and Bonnie. Um, the new puppet is in the works, but it's been in the works for quite some time because I'm I've never been happy for a design. I actually recently did find a design that was quite that I I am in fact quite happy with, and so uh, yeah, I'm a lot more I'm I'm more into that one, and so we're actually going ahead on the puppet. I I showed it off, uh, and unfortunately the reception to it was very tepid, which. Thanks, guys. Uh, I don't really know what you want. Like, I don't really know what... Uh, some people just really did not like it. Um, I'm going ahead with it anyway, honestly, because uh, it's just something I very much prefer. Uh, people would remember is that my favorite puppet was V3. And I stopped using it because it's over-sexualized over, because it's over -sexualized design wasn't very comfortable with, uh, with me. 
uh, in the aftermath of me being raped in real life. V4 came about as a result of that, and it was, like, largely desexualized. But I actually have been wanting to go back to it lately because, you know, I've, I've, I've largely recovered from it. I mean, it's... You never really fully recover from this kind of stuff, but I mean, it's... I'm kind of getting back to where I were, where I was before being assaulted. And so, you know, I, I kind of want to go back to the... I, I want to go back to that side of myself and, you know, not use a... Not use a... Pu Actually, no, that, that's not true. People expect me to be bothered at using a puppet that was created by my abuser, but, I mean, that's never really bothered me. I mean, it, it, it's a puppet at the end of the day. It's a means to an end. So, yeah, we're planning to do that. And once it's actually done and deployed, we might start putting a little more comedic skits into, into things, maybe doing funny, maybe doing little silly videos um we keep having these ideas of of little little animated skit videos to do and we think that'd be fun kind of like how kind of like how i used to frame glass of water on talking to billy and billy's gone now but uh we're, we're not we're not bringing billy back um actually fuck i think billy's puppet is lost to the ether yeah yeah billy's puppet is lost to the ether billy and v uh, and v2 are gone um but michaela is a lot more eager to draw for stuff so um we're we're going ahead we're, i mean we, we yeah we might go ahead with that i don't know i mean if, if you don't like this puppet like tell me why like please like in the comments like if you don't like it just d do me a favor in whatever else you're going to comment also talk about like what you think about the new puppet because i'm i'm showing you the new puppet and or what the new puppet's going to look like and just like tell me what you think i mean if you like it tell me why if you don't like it tell me why uh, because I've noticed a lot of people don't quite like the fact that the new puppet is more sexualized, just like a short skirt and visible yeah. cleavage. Personally, I actually quite prefer that. Uh, I mean, I prefer to, you know, I, this might sound weird, but I prefer to sexualize myself. Uh, and, uh, I just, I prefer that approach to my, to characters that are meant to represent me. I would, I, I, I could tell you why, but, I mean, I would get demonetized, but... Uh, people who follow me on Tumblr and uh, go and pop into the 18 plus streams probably already know why. But yeah, just tell me what you think about the new puppet. Again, if you like it, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. I'm going to be going ahead with it anyway. So, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I am going ahead with it uh, because, you know, the puppet has to be something I'm comfortable with and that I like to have. Uh, and you don't really see the puppet all that often anyway. So, so that, yeah, that's everything. Uh, just a quick recap. Dreams are coming back to YouTube. No, I will not be uh, saving VODs. I won't be... They, VODs will not be available. They're not going up on another channel. They're just going to be made private again like they usually are. And we're just carrying on as usual. In a minute, we'll not be coming back. Uh, because the viewership just wasn't there. I am personally very tapped out creatively in terms of critical content. And so... I'm not certain what that's going to amount to. But it's just a heads up that this is something I'm going through. And a new puppet is on the horizon with uh, possibly opening the doors to more comedic stuff. So, uh, that handles everything. That's about the closest thing to a channel update I can really get right now. So, thank you very much. Uh, Michaela's next video, I can, I know this for certain, Michaela's next video is going to be another Owl House review, uh, and possibly, possibly a second one after that, and then a video on T. Franklin's Bingo Love. Thank you for hearing me out, everyone. I know that I can be hard on you guys a lot, but I do appreciate your viewership, and I hope you have a lovely day.